So today I'm going to show you how to build out the welcome series within Klaviyo. This is a super important flow and a lot of the time it's the highest uh, revenue attributing flow within Klaviyo possible period and the story, right? So let me tell you a bit more about what the flow is intended to do. It's designed to welcome a new email subscriber once they sign up via a quiz or a pop-up of sorts. Basically, when you get this email, you're sending them this welcome series, except if you capture it through abandoned checkouts or when they place an order. Let's dive into it. So this is an account that I'm working on currently. Uh, we're doing some flow builds for them essentially, and it's a very simple supplement brand. The flows have already been built, we're just waiting for it to be turned on. But basically, I'm gonna demo a few of the nuances when it comes to building flows. And then also I'm gonna show you exactly how to actually structure it, what type of delays you're gonna want, and the types of filters that you're gonna want. So before we dive into the actual flow itself, one thing that you guys must get right is the pop-up and the lift opt-in, right? So you can see right now, the pop-ups kind of looks like this, right? Where um, it, it's just very simple, linear, kind of like uh, unlock 20%, subscribe, that kind of stuff. It's totally normal, like this is really, really standard stuff. The thing that you've got to be aware of is the pop-up submissions right here cannot be the same as the list that is right here. So if you go into uh, integrations, right? You, you want to go into Shopify and you want to make sure that it's not the same. So the list that you select, make sure to select a different list outside of pop-up submissions or quiz subscribers, because what you don't want to happen is any emails coming through the Shopify API through like abandoned checkout or anything along those lines be sent to people who did not sign up to the pop-up, but rather they came through that, right? Because then messaging gets mixed up. So you want to select a different list, let's say newsletter, and you can see that this is connected to the plethora of pop-up submissions list. So that is totally fine. So I'm just going to leave this uh, on blank just because I need to still transfer the ownership of the account. So I'm not going to update the settings, but normally you would just take this, select uh, whatever list is relevant, and make sure another thing is, when you create the list that is connected to the pop-up, which is then for the welcome series, you gotta make sure double opt-in is not enabled. You wanna use single opt-in because you're gonna double the amount of emails captured. If you end up using double opt-in, it's gonna like drastically increase the drop-off rate. So how you wanna do that is you wanna go into the list of segments and then you go into the list that you just created and you hit settings, right? The opt-in process here needs to be single opt-in rather than double. Double opt-in is selected by default. Do not make that mistake for your brand just because like, you're just gonna lose a shit ton of emails pretty much. So let's dive into the flow itself, right? So the flow itself is dead, dead easy to do. Pop-up subs, uh, welcome series. Okay, cool. So in this case, we have um, three emails right here. Sometimes we have a fourth email, but in this case we don't. So yeah, you can see the entire concept here is just to convert and get quick cash in the door and improve conversion rates from the lead coming into the ecosystem and then the lead making the top. A lot of times some people have audited brands where their welcome series of smart sending on, but if you configured it like I just showed you in terms of having a separate list for pop-up submissions compared to the Shopify API list, then you're not gonna need uh, smart sending to be turned on at all, especially if you have this filter right here, which is placed all the zero times and starting this flow. Okay, the delays for these should be between one to three days. And um, personally, I like to have a one day delay between the first and second email and a two day delay between the second and third, just because you want to drag out the time horizon a little bit uh, from a communication standpoint. And you can see in all of these, we always, always want to be mentioning the offer. Because initially when someone subscribes to your brand, like the main reason they sub to the pop-up is the offer in the first place, right? They want a good deal, which is why I should always be talking about the offer, right? So if I go into edit the email, I'll show you kind of like how the designs are generally structured. You can see how we structured the design. There's obviously logo at the top. You want to keep the banner nice and clean and you want to make sure the welcome code is very clearly visible on screen uh, just so that, and, and also followed by a very quick CTA. In terms of content, you can talk about various things. So for example, you know, like the, the actual benefits of the brand and yeah, that kind of stuff. So one thing that we do that's pretty interesting is the way we lay out like these features and benefits. 
one thing that I've seen brands do is, for example, if they have three icons like this, they would stack it horizontally. Now, the problem is 80% of all email opens are done on mobile, right? So what happens is if you open on mobile this email specifically and you see like the, uh, the badges stacked horizontally instead of vertically, the text needs to be made incredibly small and also the icons itself needs to be shrinked a little bit in order to actually fit the screen. Now, the problem with that is on mobile, it's gonna be very tough and challenging to read, which is why we, a lot of the time, prefer to stack things up vertically. And yeah, and then you also wanna include a, another CTA towards the bottom of the email. And uh, pretty much that's, that's it in terms of content, right? In terms of email two, it's basically a simple reminder and you're also gonna to wanna to hit into some social proof, introducing some reviews, talking about authority. So for this brand, they've had a lot of PR in the past. So bringing that in instead of the social proof, this is a fairly new brand, they haven't quite launched yet. So in terms of reviews, they're lacking in that department, but they more than make up for it through all of the social proof they have acquired through other channels. And lastly, the third email, I like to keep this dead simple with just some stressing urgency slash scarcity around the original offer. Um, and generally speaking, from a revenue attribution standpoint, email one generates the most and email three generates the second most. It's only like the middle child emails in the series that tends to perform less from a revenue perspective. And just to give you an idea of kind of like open rates and click through rates and those kind of things, you're ideally looking for about a 5% conversion rate from send to sale. And in terms of open rates, you can expect anywhere from 40 all the way up to around 75%. Click rates, depending on the offer, you can expect anywhere from kind of like five all the way up to 40%. Like we literally got it that crazy before. So yeah, uh, and in terms of some quick tips, I'm gonna show you this real quick. Okay, so basically on my Twitter, I tweeted out these graphics. You can see I'm not like lying about the numbers when I say this. One of my clients, we were running some sort of uh, mystery discount offer pretty much. You can see 72% open rate and almost a 40% click through and a 5.8% place order rate generating them 250,000 uh revenue in the last 30 days now bearing in mind this is like the average order of this store is two thousand dollars so it's like pretty crazy but um you can't just get the picture right so in terms of the other hacks the offer is the highest thing you can leverage to increase the conversion rate of the actual um the actual series itself so rather than split testing content of the email layout all of this nonsense you want to focus on getting the offer right to put, to up the subscription rate on the pop-up itself. And then from there, you can think about content and that kind of stuff. The next thing is you want to always split test the subject line of the first email right here, just because trying to go from 40% open rate to 70% open rate, it's a lot easier than trying to go from 2% conversion rate all the way to a 6% conversion rate via content only. So, Offers is number one, split test subject lines to get the open rates up. And also last mistake that a lot of brands I see make is they make the welcome series too long. The problem with this is like, if you make it too long, you're already gonna be sending consistent campaigns on a weekly cadence anyways. So what's gonna happen is if your welcome series is let's say 10 emails long, they're gonna receive a welcome series email and then maybe the next day they're gonna receive a campaign and then like it just, you, you see what I mean? Like it overloads the inbox of the customer and not only does that increase churn, but also just like from an effectiveness standpoint, you're not gonna be super effective. Um, but if you really wanna extend it to let's say five, six emails, which is fine, Here's an easy hack so that you don't need to design three more emails pretty much. So you want to add the highest performing campaigns in the past that you've already sent. Just add them to the welcome series, spacing them out between five to kind of like seven days apart. Make sure to turn smart sending on though. That's very, very important that you do that. And um, just so that it doesn't clash with any other campaign and that kind of stuff. So that's it in terms of how to build welcome series. I hope you found this useful. And if you're a brand that's doing over a million dollars a year, you should book in a call with me in the description below. I'd love to crush your emails. And if you're a freelancer looking to learn email marketing from the G's, 
then uh, you should buy my course. Uh, it's got great support and uh, yeah, like we, we really know what we're doing from a technicality perspective. But only buy it if you want to acquire the skill, but don't buy it just because you want to make 10k a month online. Obviously that's possible, but like, you know, approach it with the skill acquisition mindset rather than make money mindset. So yeah, thank you guys for watching. Subscribe if you haven't and I'll see you in the next one.